Hello everybody, Ian here. It's another episode of Landscape Photography Processing. In this episode I want to talk about lens flares, so how to get rid of them in Photoshop. So what are lens flares? They usually occur when you're shooting straight into a light source. In this instance I'm shooting straight into the sun in this particular image. A lot of photographers out there they say you shouldn't shoot straight into the sun and you know it's sacrilege to do so breaking all the rules of photography but i actually quite like uh, shooting into into the sun or into the light source um, you know i like the, uh, the effect you can get things like sunsets and, and things like that but a byproduct of that is you are very prone to lens flares so lens flares in this instance um you can see in this particular image we've got a big green splodge down in the foreground we've also got a another green splodge up here in the background um i'm not sure exactly what causes them i know it's something to do with your lens and the uh, the elements in your lens and light bouncing around and things like that but uh, not a physicist so i couldn't tell you exactly why they happen but they do i'm sure you've probably seen them uh, a fair amount in your own images there are techniques to get rid of them in the field. Um, sometimes I use the method of, you know, you can you can place your, your thumb in front of the lens to block out the light source and take two separate images and blend them together. But uh, I can uh, I can quite easily do it in post. Um, so happy to show you my techniques of doing so. So this particular image, uh, it's a picture of a place called Saltwick Bay on the East Yorkshire coast. Uh, got this, uh, this nice shipwreck in the foreground, a sea stack. I want to get the, the sun setting behind this, uh, this headland uh, back here. But like I said, shooting directly into the sun or the sun just off to one side, uh, I've got these, these lens, flare, lens flares in the image. So what have I done already? Uh, I'll show you uh, sort of halfway through my workflow here. So I've done an exposure blend. I, I bracketed for this, uh, three separate exposures, which I blended together using luminosity masking. Uh, I'll probably cover that in, a, in another video in the, in the future. But if you want to see what my my masks look like uh, for my uh, my masking, that's uh, where I've got to uh, uh, where I've got to already. Um, so that gives me a good sort of base exposure. I've then done some uh, some basic healing and cloning and defringing and getting rid of chromatic aberrations. As a, a couple of photographers, you might just be able to see out here. They're on a on a workshop. I don't really want them in my scene, so got rid of those guys. And then I've taken it into Camera Raw, done my basic adjustments um, I like to do, which gives me, like I said, a good sort of base starting point for my future workflow. So any further contrast and, and color toning adjustments that I, I may do from here. But first thing I want to do is get rid of this uh, or these two lens flares. So how to do this? The first method that I want to try is just using the spot healing brush. So if I just zoom in a little bit on this first one on the bottom right. So what I want to do is uh, create a brand new layer and I want to take my spot healing brush here. You can press J on your keyboard and I'll just hold that down and go to spot healing brush tool. Now what this will do, it, where you paint, it will look, Photoshop will look for areas around it and automatically replace where you're painting with uh, what it thinks should be there. So you have the content aware box selected and we're just going to paint over where this lens flare is and see what happens. So wherever this green, and if we go over the edges a little bit, there we go. And that looks pretty good. I mean, you want to tidy up a couple of places here and there where it hasn't got it quite right, but uh, as far as just getting rid of that is concerned, if we go before, after, before, after, that's done a very good job, and I'm satisfied with that. If you look at, if you're, to look at this image for the first time, you would never know there's something been, been healed in the background. So let's try it, that same method on this one up here. So this kind of conical bell-shaped flare that we've got here. So I'm gonna do this on a, a new layer. And you know, I'm just gonna paint over it with my spot healing brush and see what happens. And there we go, it looks horrible. I mean, you can, it's basically decided that there's all sorts of stuff from over here and over here in this uh, area you wanna get rid of. And you can try just going over it more and more but you know it's just it's not looking great you know the more the more you do it it's going to create all sorts of artifacting and cloned areas that you that you don't want so if we zoom out you know that just looks quite horrible so let's just get rid of that next method i like to try is just using a simple new layer on color blending mode and see if we can just replace the the, the color 
information that's there similar to what i did in, uh, in previous videos about uh, removing chromatic aberrations and getting rid of, of color issues so again i'm going to create a new layer i'm going to set the blend mode so where is this normal get the checkbox and set that to color so we're just working with color information and not uh, luminosity uh, texture information so i'm going to press b so i'll press that button for your brush tool flow around about 10 percent is uh, good for this and you just want to sample areas of color around where your flare is and just sort of gradually sort of paint over it kind of coming from this direction this time and just see if we can get rid of this this green color and then we're going to go down here onto the rocks and make my brush a bit smaller sample this yellow rock color and down this little beach and then up on this uh, this headland as well and just make my brush a little bit bigger again and just go there so what this technique has done it's very nicely got rid of of that that green color however what it hasn't done is got rid of where these lighter areas are um, you can still see where the flare was and the shape of the flare so just zooming back out if we do a before and after you know, it sorted the color but you can still see this sort of conical bell shaped object that's that's there at first glance yes you might, might not be able to see it but uh, but certainly it is apparent that something was there so when both those methods have failed what I like to do is use a technique called frequency separation. Now you might have heard of this, you might not. Um, frequency separ separation, there's a lot of videos out there. You can download actions for it uh, to use in Photoshop as well. Um, but what frequency separation was designed for I mean, many, many years ago uh, was mainly for portrait retouchers. So they wanted a method of separating the texture information from the color information. So when they're retouching a model's skin, for example, they could work on the the color of the skin without affecting the texture of the skin when they're, they're doing all the healing and, and, and cloning everything like that but we can use this in the landscape setting so any situation where you want to replace color but without uh, without affecting the texture too much or whether you've uh, replaced the color and there's still texture of the thing you've replaced left behind this is a great method to use so i'm going to go through manually how to do this again there's a lot of videos out there there's various actions I mean for example I, I've gone about the, the Tony Kuiper actions before but as part of his action sets there's a, a frequency separation action here but let me show you how to do it uh, do it manually so let me zoom back into our flare up here so first thing we we'll do is create a stamp vid visible layer of everything in your scene so you want to go control or shift and E or con command option shift and E if you're on a Mac so you should have two layers here, or oh, so you want to duplicate that. So you've got two layers here. So Control and J to duplicate that. So you've got two of the same layer here. First thing you want to do is deselect your top layer and click on the lower layer here. And what we're going to do is we're going to blur this. So filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And you want to pick a radius uh, where the detail in the area you want to get rid of just starts to disappear. So gradually go up, go up. The trick of this technique is not to use a radius that's too high um, because uh, it works better when the radius is as, as low as you can get it. So just looking at the detail in the in the sea and the waves here, and it's gradually starting to about there, I think about five pixels are looking pretty good. So we still got the color information, but a lot of the texture information is blurred out. So I'm gonna click OK there. Next thing you want to do is activate your top layer, click on it, activate it, and you go to image, apply image. Now this is where you might want to write a couple of things down in uh, settings wise. So first thing you want to do is the layer. You want to click on that and you want to select the layer that you've blurred. So in this instance, we've got layer, fly, layer 5 was our blurred layer. And I'll click on that, channel RGB. Now there's two different settings you want to use depending on whether you're using a 16-bit image or an 8-bit image. The way to tell is either going image and uh, mode and see what mode you're in or easier than that if you look at the top here where you've got your uh, your file name you see RGB and then 16 that means you're working on a 16-bit image. If that says 8 you're working on an 8-bit image. I like to work in 16-bit because uh, basically 16-bit contains double the amount of, uh, of information as 8-bit as does. But if you're working on JPEGs and things like that, usually you'll find they're in 8-bit. In so 
with regards to the differences between the two, I'm on a 16 bit image. So I want my blending to be add. I want my scale to be two and my offset to be zero. And then I want to check invert and the whole image should turn uh, sort of very gray color with uh, you see all your textures, but very little color information. Now, if you were on a eight bit image, you want to keep all this the same. You want to uncheck invert and you want to change your blending to subtract and you want your scale to be two and your offset to be one, two, eight. And that should give you the, a similar type deal with the uh, you know, gray image with the texture and, and very little color. But because we're on a 16 bit image, I'm going to change that back to add scale to offset zero, click invert, get our gray image here, click OK. Next thing we want to do to get rid of this uh, this kind of effect here, this sort of high pass effect, change our blend mode from normal, and you want to scroll down and select linear light. Now that should get you back to essentially where you started. You probably won't see any difference whatsoever. In fact, if I group these two together, so I'm going to hold down control, select both of my layers, put them into a group. I'm going to change the group name to FS for frequency separation. And if I turn this off and on, you should see no difference whatsoever, which is which is what you want. If you're seeing differences, then you've done something wrong with the, your settings. You want to go back and, and check what you've entered there. Okay, so again, what we've done here, we've separated our color information from our texture information here. So I'm going to label the bottom layer color. So that contains all our color information. And this top gray layer contains all our texture information. So we can work on each of these separately. So first thing I do is I select my color layer and just like we did before with the uh, the, the layer in color blending mode I want to take my brush and flow about 10% and I'm just going to start brushing out uh, where this green color is so again sampling from color around it and just uh, do what we did before and just start blending out this uh, this green color and coming from the other direction getting rid of anything that's green and just making sure that it's all all blending in quite nicely now some of the green color will remain because our texture information will still have a little bit of, of, of color information with it but I'm just going up on this on this headland here in sampling painting if I was doing this uh, properly I'd probably spend a, a fair bit of time uh, just make sure the colors match evenly but for the sake of the video I'm just gonna do a bit of a, a, a rough job so down on this uh, these rocks here and then across here so again we've got a nice got to a nice place where the green color is pretty much gone but we're still seeing this outline of, uh, of where the lens flare is even though it's very very faint now where that kind of faint lines is you'll find on our texture layer and the way to deal with that is by selecting your texture layer and this time we're going to use the clone stamp tool so press the S or clone stamp tool there and I'm going to zoom right in here so what we're going to do is replace anywhere where the texture just doesn't look quite right so mainly around this sort of border here first thing I do is go up on this headland so holding down alt click to sample an area next door to it and just gradually paint out that I've got my flow about 30% and just go over it build that up gradually and that's got rid of all of that green color on that headland so moving down into the sea I'm going to up my flow maybe to about 50% I'm going to sample on this uh, sort of shoreline here make sure it sort of matches up and then just gradually just painting painting in here again you just want to sample paint just so everything matches up matches up nicely and just wear those that sort of border of you just very faintly see that green color still there so we're just going along sampling painting again I'm, I'm just doing a fairly rough job here for the purpose of this uh, this video and coming down here to well, that's, that's not right there we go and then we've still got some happening in here maybe just a little bit up on this, uh, this shoreline here Again, if you think there's still a little bit of green there, you can always come back to your color and switch between the two until you get it right. So going back to a color layer, selecting our brush tool, sampling this color, and just see if we can just get that blending a lot nicer. There we go, and then up on this 
on this headline and make my brush a bit smaller. Clicking away, clicking away, clicking away. I make my brush really big this time. Just go a couple more passes just so that blends really nicely. And there we go. Again, I've done a fairly rough job for the sake of the video, but you can see our lens flare is now gone. We've got no texture left over, no shapes. We've got no green color. If I do before, after, let's zoom in a little bit more. So before, after, before, after. I could probably go back in and just tidy up where these sort of, you can see this sort of a, a darker and, and lighter splodges here, but that just be very quick to take care of. Um, you know, at a later date. But for this video, like I said, I'm happy with the, the results there. We've retained our texture and we've got rid of our, our color. So that's done a pretty good job on that image. Let's look at uh, another example. Um, very similar settings. So I've got the sun in the in a very similar place. Um, we've got these these lens, flare, lens flares happening in, in very similar areas, actually. So I'm going to concentrate on this one down here. Again, I'm going to use the same technique as figure separation, just like we did before. I won't go through all that again. Um, but let's go down to our one down here on the rocks. Now let's try our two different, uh, two different techniques once again. So I'm creating a new layer and try the spot healing brush as a first job. So it's going over here. Yeah, it's done a fairly decent job already. But yeah, I mean, you're getting all sorts of artifacts in the rocks start looking naturally. You're getting patches of grass appearing. You've got flat parts and blurry bits on the rock. And I suppose if you spend enough time on it going over, um, you know, you could probably get that right. So let's do away with that and try our color layer. So new layer, blend mode, color. Brush tool, and again, flow at about 10%. Uh, let's try this, this spot here first. So you're gonna sample a sort of green color from this grass. I'm just going to paint over it, paint over it, and you see, yeah, it's getting rid of our our bright green lens flare. But what it's doing, it's not getting, it's not fixing any of the texture. It's uh, the, this green color is a lot lighter than the surrounding area, so we just ended up with this white splodge there. And we just try again down here on these rocks, pick some of this rock color, and again, you know, similar sort of thing. You can you can see where the lens flare used to be. From just a, it's, it's a lot lighter and a little bit blurry um, where the lens flare was. So by default, I'm going to try my frequency separation again. So this time I'm just working on the background layer. I've got my um, this is stuff I've done before, but I've gone back to my my basic uh, basic adjustments from my raw file. Uh, I'm going to create a stamp visible if you haven't already. Once you've done that, you want to duplicate that twice. Disengage the top layer, so make that invisible. Select your bottom layer of the two. Um, okay, we're gonna go to, gonna zoom in a little bit so you can see our texture. Filter, blur, Gaussian blur. And again, you just wanna blur it so the details start to, to go. So in this one, I'm gonna go a little bit higher, maybe around six, six and a half pixels, maybe something like that. Again, you wanna keep this as low as possible. Um, but yeah, a lot of the detail and the fine detail of the grass has gone now it's all blurred out so that's fine with me top layer engage the top layer and you want to go to image apply image again we're working on a 16-bit image uh, you want to follow the previous instructions we work in 8-bit but we want uh, blending add scale to offset zero you want to check invert and you want to choose your layer the blurred layer so in this instance it's layer zero copy and we get this high pass uh, looking gray layer here we still got some color information in the in the grass as well uh, bleeding through but that's fine click OK and again blend mode you want linear light so there we go and I'm gonna again group these together and just double check yep not seeing any change if I switch that on and off I'm just gonna rename my layers we've got color on the bottom and we've got text if I'm allowed to spell it properly texture on the top there we go. So like before, we're going to work with our color layer first. So selecting our color layer and we've got our brush tool flow at about 10%. So let's do this, uh, this splodge here first. You want to pick this sort of greeny color here. So come out there and just start, start to paint. In fact, I'm going to make it a little bit dark. I'm going to select a, sort of what some of the darker. There we go. That's better. So some of the darker colors in the grass are going to work better in this, uh, this particular area. Just make sure 
make sure it blends quite nicely because this looks like it's naturally in the shadow anyway so there we go so moving on to it's a little bit on the rock there so select this is where you want to get uh, quite selective what you're painting so making the brush smaller I select this shadow of color in the rock and moving down onto the rocks here again we've got a shadow gray color here you want to put that in the shadows or nooks and crannies in the rocks coming up on top, top of the rock you want to select this lighter color here gradually go over and just a little bit more again i'll probably be a lot more careful for doing this in my own time but uh, i don't want to to bore you that much so i'm just going to do a, a fairly rough job so sample paint sample paint Again, I'm coming down into the the grass here so it's a darker grass color and as you can see we're getting all the texture that was hidden by that green splodge is now coming back through now we're, now we're removing that green color we can see the the texture coming back so just finishing touches got a little bit on the top there brilliant so I'm pretty happy with that I'm gonna get one of this shadow color here and just come into this the bottom of this uh, this rock here Ooh, that's wrong there we go if you make a mistake you know he's just undo or just paint over it it's all fine brilliant so let's zoom out and do a before and after so our layers are grouped before after before after now I can see right on this highlight of this rock here compared to the the highlights and the other rocks we are losing some of the texture so that's easily fixed by selecting our texture layer clone stamp or s for your stamp tool and let's just go in it was mainly on the top here we're just getting looks a little bit sort of false and blurred so i'm just going to uh, hold down alt and sample a, an area of high texture maybe up here on these highlights of the rock and again flow at about 50 percent and just sort of paint in some some texture maybe in this area here so i want to take a a grayer bit that's in the shadow maybe down here somewhere I'll just uh, paint in some some texture that doesn't look quite right so i'm just going to take another sample there and if you make a snake, you just paint over it. It's fine. There we go. We've got some texture back in the in the rock down here. Brilliant. So let's zoom back out. Uh, full screen. Before, after, before, after, and there you go. Lens flare's gone. And again, I would spend time uh, taking care of this one uh, up here, like we did in the previous video. Um, but I think you get the general gist of the of the technique. And I'm going to label my group frequency separation. I'll just call it FS for short. Now, if, if you're running out of, uh, if you're working with a particularly large image with lots of layers and things like that, you can always simplify this by just merging this group together. If you just want uh, one one group, if you've finished all your frequency separation and everything, uh, what I usually do just to save uh, disk space and, and image space um, is you can where is it merge group down here. Just merge that and that should merge the two into a, a separate layer called frequency separation and everything is still there so i hope you found that useful uh if you did please uh, like and subscribe uh, any comments uh, are welcome and uh, yeah hopefully see you again in the next video see you later bye, -bye.